Hello and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. So today we are going to do something a little bit different, something we don't usually do on this channel, and that's talk about pop music. So usually on this channel I like to focus on classical music or older styles, but today I want to talk to you about key changes. And the best way to demonstrate key changes is to look at pop music where key changes are usually like really dramatic and big and sometimes cheesy and overused, but they're really, really awesome nonetheless. Before I go showing you a bunch of examples of key changes, I just wanted to make sure you're clear on what a key change is. So a key change, it's pretty much what it sounds like. Maybe you start in a certain key, like the key of C major, and you're playing your song, you're in C major, then at some point in the song, you like change it to D major. So you're literally changing keys. So now like all the notes are based on the D major scale instead of the C major scale. That's what a key change is. And I'm gonna be using another term here. It's a little bit more of like a music geek term, but the key is, or the term is modulation. And for our purposes today, they basically mean the same thing. Modulation is basically a key change. So I, I just wanted to get you kind of like familiar with that word because we'll be using it more in the future too. And I think it's good to like get your music geek terms all figured out. So for the remainder of this video, I am going to hop on a keyboard. I'm sorry, I'm like, you can't see them, but my keyboards are over there. I was looking at my keyboards. So for the remainder of this video, I'm gonna hop to the keyboard and I'll show you examples on the piano of the 12 pop songs that I chose that give us like a really good sense of key changes and how they work both like big and small. So let's go do that. So we are gonna start by looking at one of the most big and obvious types of modulation, the step up. So this sweeping and dramatic key change is usually accomplished by the musician repeating the same part, like a, like a chorus, but a half step up. So this is the easiest type of modulation to hear, even for the untrained ear, because first you're in one key, in our future example, it's gonna be A minor, and then suddenly you're in a completely different key. So this kind of modulation, the step up, usually happens towards the end of a song when the musician is just repeating the chorus. So uh, it's like their logic's going, instead of just repeating the chorus in the same key, they literally step it up just to add a little bit of variation. So the one I'm going to show you is an ABBA song called Money, 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 and the whole song, up until about the two minute mark is in the key of A minor, up until the very, very last part where they suddenly shift into the key of B minor. So I'll show you that on the keyboard here. Jackson also pulls off a really big powerful step up modulation in his song Man in the Mirror. So he starts in the key of G major and then eventually like near the end of the song he shifts to the key of G sharp major for the remaining courses. Like that. So what I love about this song is he literally changes keys while singing the word change. So it's just kind of kind of like throwing it in your face there. Our next example of stepping up is from the Backstreet Boys in their song, I Want It That Way. So side note, the first concert I ever went to was a Backstreet Boys concert and I was 14 years old. Um, the Backstreet Boys don't just climb a half step for their grand finale like the other two examples, they climb a whole step. So they're in the key of A major and then they kind of migrate to the key of B major when Nick Carter does his little like high vocal la dita, which I will attempt to imitate on the piano. Instead of stepping 
setting up for a big effect, some songwriters will actually choose to step down. So this doesn't necessarily result in the grandeur of a step up modulation, but if it's done quickly or abruptly, like without any transition, it's still pretty noticeable to the ear. So a good example of this is Layla by Derek and the Dominoes, aka Eric Clapton, and let's let's take a look at that to find that step down modulation. So it starts in the key of D minor. And as soon as the singing starts, it transforms into the key of C sharp minor. So it starts here, it transforms here. So this creates a really, I feel like it's really noticeable, even if you're not musical at all, but it's not necessarily epic. And another thing that's different about this example versus the other ones is this is at the very beginning of the song as opposed to the others, which are key changing at the very end. abruptly changing keys at the drop of a hat, some musicians prefer to bridge that change with a chord or two so that the transition is smoother and less random. So adding these transition chords, which music nerds would call pivot chords, doesn't necessarily mean there's less drama during the key change, but what it does usually mean is that the transition from one key to the next sounds more seamless and less abrupt. Even if you're not very familiar with the idea of key changes, you probably don't even have to listen to Whitney Houston's I'll Always Love You to remember that like powerful and dramatic step up on the last chorus. So most of the song is in the key of A major, and for the last chorus she moves up to B major, so like a full step like the Backstreet Boys did in I Want It That Way. What the songwriters did for this song though is they put an E major between the change. So I'll, I'll give you just like a little, little hint of that. There's our E major and it kind of like pauses there and waits for a little bit and then we transition to the key of B. changes would be complete without a shout out to the Beatles. So we're going to look at Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds because it moves through three different key signatures in the first minute of the song. So they start in the key of A major and then they migrate to the key of B flat major before the chorus. And then when they get to the chorus they're in the key of G major. In order to get from one key to the next, they use those pivot chords we were talking about. I'll just show you here. So between the key of A major and B flat major, they use a D minor chord. I'll just show you here. And here's our D minor chord, which is a bridge. And now, now we're in the key of B flat major. So they're happily in the key of B flat major. prepared for G major leading up to the chorus. So next we'll talk about parallel key modulation. So parallel key modulation is what happens when a composer chooses to stay in the same key, but reverse its major or minor orientation. So the example I'll give you is the song Happy Together by the Turtles. So it starts in F sharp minor, which creates like a kind of like sad sounding verse. And then it suddenly in the chorus, which is to F sharp, major, which you'll hear in a second. This I think is a really deliberate attempt on the composer's part to show both the kind of like the longing 
in the in the verse, like the sad part for the person who's no longer there, and then the happiness and the chorus that they felt when they were happy together. also pulls off a parallel key modulation in their 90s song The Sign. So the intro starts in the kind of like cool sounding G minor. But just when you start getting into the groove there, they flip it around to G major for the verse. So I'll show you that on the piano. songwriters will make a large leap when they do a key change instead of just like a step. They, it's basically like they're going for the gold. So our friend Bon Jovi went for a really wild key change in a song Living on a Prayer. So it's in the key of E minor for most of the song and then modulates up a diminished fifth to the key of B flat major. So if that's not rock and roll, I don't know what is. Just listen to that. Here's, here's your original key. Like that is a very unnatural sounding change, but he somehow pulls it off in his song Living on a Prayer. And just as a side note too, if you remember during Halloween, we did a video on tritones, which are these kind of like evil sounding tones, which we're talking about here, the diminished fifth. So that's what Bon Jovi is transposing to, and I will show you. subtle key changes a composer can do is flip from a minor key to its relative major or vice versa. So we've talked about relative major and minor keys before so just click on the screen if you want to know more about that but the gist of it is this every major key has a minor counterpart. So when a composer say goes from the key of A minor and then modulates to the key of C major it's not a very noticeable change because these two keys share a key signature. So C major, no sharps or flats, A minor, no sharps or flats. So modulating from a relative major to a minor is very subtle. So we'll hear this in U2 song one. Uh, the verses are in the key of A minor. And the chorus moves to the key of C major when it's into that part that we kind of all know. easier and more seamless to modulate to than others. So step ups, for example, make a really big statement, but sometimes the composer wants to switch things up and make it different without being like super epic. So for example, like I just showed you, modulating to the relative minor or major is really subtle. Another subtle modulating option is modulating to the subdominant. So the subdominant is the fourth note. So say you're in the key of G major, the fourth note, or subdominant would be C. So if you're in the key of G and then you change to the key of C major, that would be modulating to the subdominant. These keys are very closely related, which is what makes modulating to them a little easier. The example for this next one is not a pop song, but I did want to bring up the Yellow Rose of Texas again, because in a previous tutorial, which I'll link to again on the screen, I feel like I'm linking a lot of things on screen, the sheet music didn't include a key change, but basically all recorded versions of the Yellow Rose of Texas do have a key change, and it modulates to the subdominant. So I will show you that here. So we're starting in the key of G major. And then eventually we're gonna migrate to the key of C major, which sounds very natural. The last 
last type of key change we'll look at today is a key change to the dominant. So the dominant is the fifth note. Using our key of G major as an example again, the fifth note from G, one, two, three, four, five, would be D. So modulating to the dominant would look like this. You start in the key of G, and then you eventually end up in the key of D major. And this is exactly what happens in Queen's song, Save Me. Up until the big chorus, the song is in the key of G. And then once that big chorus hits, we're transported to transported to the key of D. So that's modulation, that's key changing. Hopefully you got something out of this video and you maybe learned something or maybe you even discovered that one of your favorite songs has a key change and you never knew that before. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it around to people so we can like educate the masses <laughs> on key changes. Thank you for watching and catch you next time. Ah, so what's the point? <laughs>